Hello, everyone, and welcome. Wow. And welcome to our latest Cambly Live session. Uh, to those of you that uh, don't know me, I'm Daryl. I'm going to be your tutor today. I see there are a few people in the chat already that have said hello. We've got Luann and Miss Christina and Sonia and uh, Kalipan. Hello to all you guys. Uh, Kalipan, I, I hope you're uh, the the. I hope the class will give you the excitement that you want. Uh, everybody else that is in the the chat that's waiting for the lesson, please send a message. Tell us where you're from. Say hello. We want to know where you're from. To those of you that are joining us today for the first time, uh, if you don't know Cambly, it is a great uh, online and uh, app-based uh, program, a, a platform where you can chat one-on-one -on -one with tutors just like me. I'll explain a little more at the end of the session, and I'm going to give you guys a, a discount code that you can use straight away. So stay until the end of the session to get that. Oh, I see some more uh, messages coming through. We've got Ibrahim, Kavia, uh, again, Luan and Sonia. Luan is from Brazil. We've got uh, Zumer, uh, the Golden Trio. This is Nuski from Sri Lanka. I hope I'm saying all these names correctly. And Ibrahim is from Somalia. Thank you guys for joining us. Remember that if you've missed any of the other Cambly live sessions, it's in a playlist. And there's also a playlist for all the uh, non-live sessions, so you can go check out everything if you've missed something before. Oh, we've got a few more. We've got uh, Maximed, also from Somalia, Tanya from Pakistan, Alex from Sri Lanka, uh, Fayim, who's asking how tall I am, uh, and we've got uh, Sky, uh, Zane from Pakistan. Great. Uh, all right, so... Uh, what are we doing today? Today, we are doing idioms for daily life. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about idioms that you can use in a lot of different places in the way that you live. And this is why I love the idioms that we're doing today, because first, they are very useful. You're going to see that we can use them in lots of different situations. And also, they if you've taken a look already, are sometimes a little strange. They sound a little weird. So they're fun to learn. And even though you may think, well, some of these maybe sound a little strange, we use these a lot. So it's something that you're learning that is uh, unique and something that is very useful. Now, what kind of situations can you use these uh, idioms for? So I haven't gone and put these in sections, but these are the kinds of places. So for example, social interaction. When you are talking with someone, interacting with someone, that's um, whether it's a good interaction or a bad interaction, sometimes you can use an idiom to describe it, to talk about it. Uh, to go with that, we have conflict resolution uh, idioms. So when you're in conflict with someone, we have a lot of idioms to describe that, to explain how strong the conflict is and to explain your frustrations. Uh, then we've got emotional idioms. These are always actually my favorite because we all have emotions. We all feel things. And so we have a lot of idioms that can describe how we feel emotionally. Um, and then we have action idioms. Action, you know, is when we're doing something. And we've got events idioms. So events is something happens, and we can use an idiom to describe what happened, whether it was good, whether it was bad, whether it was in between. So all of the idioms we're going to look at today fall into one of those categories. All right. And remember, today is an interactive lesson. Uh, so I want you guys, if there's an idiom that you have heard that you're a little confused about, or even if you, you know what it means and it's really interesting, put it in the chat. We'll try to explain it. Also, as we're going through the idioms, I'm going to give you, obviously, some examples of how to use it. 
I would like you guys to send some uh, examples of your own, of a situation or a sentence that uses the idiom so we can again see if you're using it correctly and share something interesting with everybody. I'm going to try as we go to type uh, the idioms into the chat so that you'll have them with the correct spelling and everything. Um, and if you have any questions about idioms, maybe even in general, we can discuss that as well. All right, so I think we've got everybody with us. Um, I see we've got some suggestions for other uh, classes. The Golden Trio has given us a suggestion. So that's great. I'm, gonna, I'm taking that into account. But for today, we're doing idioms for daily life. All right, now we're going to start with kind of a fun one and a funny sounding one. And it says, it's not over till the fat lady sings. So that sounds really strange. Why are we talking about a fat lady singing? Uh, so what this means is that don't give up. Obviously, we can make that a bit longer, but I want to summarize. So that means don't give up. So it means the end is not here yet. There's still stuff that we can do. There's still something that I could try to get what I want. I will tell you where people say this expression comes from. So there is a, I'm sure some of you know it already, there is a musical genre called opera. So it's uh, that uh, kind of play where everybody sings in a very dramatic fashion on stage. And sometimes the end song is by a, a woman that sings in a very big way, and that ends the the show that ends the story. So the expression is the story is not over until the fat lady, the lady sings at the end. So let's uh, think of an example of when we could use this. So let's say um, you are, let's look at it from an English perspective. Let's say you are studying for an English test, an English proficiency test like IELTS or TOEFL, or maybe even for an exam at school and you're trying and it's very difficult and you don't know how you're gonna do and if you're going to be able to pass and do well. And maybe you get depressed and you say to your friend, listen, ah, this is so hard, uh, I can't, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna pass. And your friend could say, well, it's not over till the fat lady sings. In other words, don't give up, keep trying, keep looking, keep learning, keep looking for, other things you can do, and maybe you will pass at the end. Maybe you're going to do well, so don't give up. All right, so that's It's Not Over Till the Fat Lady Sing. And I've always liked that one. I think it's, it's just a funny one, and uh, it's useful. I'm going to type it into the chat. You guys can start uh, giving me an example of how to use that in a sentence or a conversation. Um, all right, so we have It's... Ooh, my typing, not over till the fat lady sings. All right. All right. So, and what does it mean? Like I said, very simply put, don't give up. Keep trying. There we go. Don't give up. Keep trying. All right. Then let's move on to another one. Oh, and before we, we finish with that one, as you can see, it's useful in lots of situations. So there are many things in life that we try and we get worried about and maybe we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it could be the exam. It could be a relationship. It could be um, buying a house. It could be anything. So this is very useful in lots of situations. That's why it's for daily life. It's for anything. All right. Uh, we could even use it for something small. Let's say you are driving and you're stuck in a traffic jam and you're going to be home late or you think you're going to be home late and miss a meeting or miss a television program. And someone could say, well, it's not over till the fat lady sings. In other words, maybe we will still get home in time. So it's really useful for lots of places. All right. Then another one that is funny, sounds fun is let's give something a whirl. So the something 
can change. All right, we could put many different things into the something. So, uh, for example, uh, let's say you are eating, the, or there, there's, there's a new weird food on the menu at a restaurant. Uh, uh, let's say there's crocodile. Let's say you're at a restaurant in Africa or somewhere, and on the menu is crocodile. All right, I've actually eaten crocodile. I'll tell you after we finish this uh, what it tastes like. So let's say on the menu there is crocodile, and everyone at the table is thinking, should we order the crocodile? Should we eat the crocodile? So we could say, well, let's give the crocodile a whirl. In other words, let's give it a try. Let's try it. You know, it could be, it could be good. So that's what this means. Let's try. So you say to everyone, all right, let's give the crocodile a whirl. Let's give it a try. And it comes and you're going to see if you like it or not. I will tell you uh, from my personal experience, uh, I liked the crocodile. Um, it had like a lot of fat on it because, you know, it's a, it's a cold animal. So it needs a lot of fat and had a lot of flavor. So I like that. Uh, so again, very useful in a lot of different situations. You could give anything a whirl. Let's say, let's go back to the English test. Let's say you know English and you want to, to do the test, but you're not sure. You could say, well, I'll give the test a whirl. In other words, I'll give it a try. I'm going to try and see if I can do it and what happens. So you're giving it a try. Um, so that is give something a whirl. Let me put it into the, the chat over here. Uh, so let's give, I'm going to put it a whirl because that's another way we can abbreviate it. So that means let's try. I'll actually put it over here as well. Oop. And we can say let's give it a whirl. I see we've got some uh, messages here. Um, Okay, someone is helping us with uh, our, our messaging. Uh, that's someone called Studying English with Meng Hong. All right, great, thank you. Uh, Liz and Hama Uriaz says, never lose hope until death comes. And I like this one from uh, Grihan. And he says, I will not give up till the fat lady sings. So that, that's very positive. Yeah, I'm not going to give up until the end. I'm going to keep trying. All right, very positive. Um, then... Let's move on to another one, all right? And here we have play with fire, all right? So that, that sounds like it's a dangerous thing to do. And so to play with fire actually means to do something dangerous, to do something risky. So play with fire, do something dangerous, and another word for dangerous is risky. Risky, again, it's the same kind of thing. It's something that could go bad. Maybe you shouldn't do it. You could get hurt. You could lose something. That's what risky is. So it's very similar uh, to the word dangerous. So let's look at an example here. All right. Let's say, let's look now at a relationship example. All right. Something more emotional. So we have uh, one guy and he's got his girlfriend. And let's say they're very happy together. And then let's say he starts to like another girl. All right. So behind the back of his girlfriend, she doesn't know what's happening. He goes and starts seeing the other girl. So his friend could say, you know, listen, you're playing with fire. In other words, you're doing something that's dangerous, that's risky. You could get hurt. They could get hurt. You could be found out. Something bad could happen. All right, so playing with fire means just be careful. You're doing something really dangerous, really risky. And again, you can see this is very useful in lots of situations. So there we had our uh, relationship situation. We could have others. Um, let's say, let's go back to our English exam. So someone is working towards their English test. And let's say they're not really studying. They're not really putting in the effort. The test is there but they are not studying. Again, their friend could say, you're playing with fire. In other words, you're doing something dangerous. You're doing something that could be very risky. 
Uh, and of course, we could make this a, a big example, something much uh, more dangerous. So uh, let's say someone is driving their car really fast because they want to get home really quickly. You could again say you're playing with fire. You're doing something dangerous. Be careful. All right. So again, useful in lots of situations. There is even actually, maybe you guys know, a, uh, a song called uh, Playing With Fire from the Rolling Stones. Uh, and if you go and listen to that song, I'll actually write it over here, uh, and, and think about the meaning, the song will make a lot more sense. All right, so that is to play with fire. Let me put it into the chat. Oh, we've got some chat emojis here. Thanks for that, uh, Hama Yuriaz. I hope I say that correctly. So play with fire. This means do something dangerous and risky. All right, we've also got some more um, messages here. Let's see what we have. Here we go. There it is from Ibtahal. Same example. Don't drive fast. You play with fire. Uh, and um, we've got don't go there. You play with fire. Okay, another good example from Ibtahal. So don't go in there. You're playing with fire. It could be dangerous. All right, keep them coming. And remember, if there's any idiom that you know or you want to know the meaning of, put it in the chat. All right, then this is another very strange sounding one. Very strange. Trip the light fantastic. Trip the light fantastic. It's another one that I actually like a lot because it sounds like a poem. It sounds very beautiful. Trip the light fantastic. And what it means is to dance. So... It's a nice, uh, very fancy way to say to dance. And I'll even draw uh, two little uh, dancing people here. All right, so they're dancing. So that's what it means. It's uh, that one perhaps, obviously, maybe only useful in certain situations, but we use that. It does come up a lot maybe in um, flyers or in adverts for certain kinds of dances. They will say, come, trip the light fantastic. In other words, come, dance, have some fun. Um, that's what it means, trip the light fantastic. I'm not sure where it comes from. Uh, I think it, uh, it might come from a, like an old poem. That's why it sounds like a poem. But it's a, it's a fun way to say, let's go dance. All right. Then let's move on to another one. It's another weird sounding one. And this is to paint the town red. Paint the town red. So it kind of goes a little bit with uh, the dancing and happy vibe. To paint the town red means to go and have fun. So it could be a lot of different ways to have fun. Go and have fun. So it could be a night out, you and your friends, you're going to go and have a good time. You're going to go to a club or a restaurant. You're going to have fun. You could say, let's paint the town red. In other words, let's go and have fun. Let's have a good time. But it doesn't always have to be a night out anywhere where you're going to have fun. So even if you're saying, well, let's, let's go out for ice cream, you could say in a fun way, well, let's paint the town red. Let's go crazy about it. Let's have fun. That's another expression that goes with this, and I'll write it down, is let's go crazy. Oop. About it, which is another kind of expression. And it's the same kind of thing. Let's go and have fun. Let's go do it and let's have fun with it. Let's go crazy. So let's paint the town red. Let's go crazy. It's all about having fun in any way. Any way that you want to talk about it. it doesn't have to be the club or the ice cream. Any way that you have fun is to paint the town red. Let me write these two into the chat. All right, so we've got uh, trip the light fantastic, which means to dance. And we have paint the town red, and that is go and have fun. All right, and you guys can put in the chat. You can tell me. Um, how would you paint the town red? What do you consider to be like a good way to go out and have a little bit of fun? Um, what do we have? We have, ooh, this is a great example from uh, Hamayu Riaz. 
And his example of that Trip the Light Fantastic is, you look gorgeous. Please come to Trip the Light Fantastic. That is a great uh, example of how to use it. So you're at a club. You want uh, someone to dance with you. That's what you would say. Very, very good. Um, oh, and here we've got from Ibtahal. It is a holy day or a holiday. Uh, let's paint the town red. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So you got a free day. It's a holiday. Let's go paint the town red. Let's go have some fun. Very good uh, uses. Keep them coming. All right. So we've done paint the town red. Trip the light. Fantastic. Oh, and let's go crazy. Which is also uh, have some fun. Then uh, let's go and do something again, a little more dramatic, something about relationships. And we have stab someone in the back. Now to stab is to take a knife and do that. That is to stab. So if we're stabbing someone in the back, very uh, dramatic sounding idiom. What it means is we are doing something. Uh, we are betraying them. So betray is a big, nice word. And if you guys don't know it, I'm going to explain it. So betray means you are friends with someone or you're not enemies. You're not in conflict. You're friends with someone and they do something bad to you. Usually you may not know about it, but they do something bad. So let's, let's have an example. Let's say you're at work and you have your friend at work. You both work together. And let's say there is a, a new job, a manager job that is up, right? And you could get it. Your friend could get it. So your friend starts to tell the boss that you are not a good worker, all right? He starts to say how you don't do your work, you uh, are always leaving early. So he's telling these lies about you. He is stabbing you in the back. He is betraying you. You were friends, you were close, you were good together, and now he's doing something bad to you. He wants that position. So that is to stab someone in the back, to betray them, to do something bad to a friend. So do something bad to a friend. Even with our example from earlier, we had the, the boyfriend that's cheating on his girlfriend. We could say that in a way he's definitely stabbing her in the back. He's doing something bad to her and she doesn't even know. So again, it's more of an emotional relationship idiom. And I, unfortunately, we've all had experiences like that. So again, it's useful in lots of different places. It could be a small uh, betrayal, could be a small bad thing they do, or it could be a big bad thing they do. That's what stabbing someone in the back is, doing something bad. All right, then another interesting sounding one. Maybe you guys have never heard of this one before. It says, let bygones be bygones. Let bygones be bygones. So firstly, what is a bygone? Uh, a bygone we can think of as uh, the past. That's what a bygone is. So it could be something good, something bad. It's something in the past. I'll put it over here. And so when we say let bygones be bygones, what we're saying is Whatever happened in the past, let's forget about it. So it could relate to maybe something we've already done. Uh, let's say we had the stabbing in the back and the guy did something bad. So the friend lied to the boss. They wanted the position. And then maybe he doesn't get it either. You don't get it. He doesn't get it. There's another person that gets the manager position. And so then you have this talk with your friend and you decide, okay, let's Let's let bygones be bygones. So you did something bad, but you're still my friend. So it's in the past. Let's let it go. So that's what let bygones be bygones mean. Let the past go. And usually, obviously, the past in this situation is something bad. So something bad. Uh, happened or something not so pleasant and you want to forget about it, let bygones be bygones. Um, and bygone, you may think, well, why, where does this word come from? In a way, we're talking about um, it's by, you can think of it to, to remember it is like we're saying goodbye. It's gone. 
That's the way to remember what it means. You're saying goodbye. It's gone to the past. All right, so that's let bygones be bygones. Let me put these into the chat. We've got a lot, some stuff coming up here. So stab someone in the back, which means to betray. And to betray means do something bad to a friend. And then we've got let bygones be bygones, which means let the past go. Forget and move on. All right. Oh, we've got someone that I think has just joined the chat, uh, Bob Arelli, who's saying, hello, how are you? I think we're all doing great. If you guys have missed the beginning of the, chat, uh, the, the session, don't forget everything is recorded. It's going into the playlist so you can go catch up and watch later on. Uh, thanks for joining us. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, all right, he betrayed me. He stabbed me in the back. Thank you, uh, Music 2021. That's perfect. Uh, Hamayu Riaz says uh, for Let's Paint the Town Red. Come on, friend. Let's paint the town red. That's a very nice use. Um, and then he thinks he is her friend, but he stabs her in the back. So he thinks that they're friends, but he's doing something. He's doing something bad. Um Oh, and I hope this isn't true, Maximed, that your girlfriend stabbed you in the back. But even if she did, it's a good use of the idiom. Um, oh, and this is a great one from Grihan. Uh, be careful with levels of trust. Uh, you could be stabbed in the back. So, yes, uh, be careful who you trust and who you tell things to and who you're close to. Maybe they will stab you in the back and betray you. Really nice. Um, and here we've got a, a great um, use from Johnny. Uh, don't uh, just forget the bygone and move forward. So we've taken the idiom, kind of broken it up there, which we do. So very, very nice. And uh, Ibtahal is uh, sending love to all of us. So that's great. Thanks, Ibtahal. All right. We're going to do one more. Then what I'm going to do quickly is talk about how to learn idioms before we do a few more at the end of the session. So let's do the final one on the board right now, which is to give someone a dirty look. So to explain this, I'm going to show you what a dirty look is. All right, I'm going to look right in the camera. All right, so you can see I kind of, I look angry. I look mean. I look like I, there, I'm disapproving. I don't like what you're doing. I may not like you. That is a dirty look. So it's to give someone a look that says, I'm angry. What you're doing is not right. I'm not happy. That's all in that one look. So to give someone a dirty look is to look angry, upset, and, um, well, I, I can't write the whole thing, but to not like what is done. So we've all had to give someone a dirty look. We've all had dirty looks given to us. Uh, so it could be, again, lots of situations. So let's say we're back with our friend. All right. So before we let the bygones be bygones, I find out that he is telling the boss that I am not a good worker. I'm going to give him a dirty look. I'm going to look at him angry and let him know that what he did was not right. Could be other examples. Let's take it down to a different place. Let's talk about a family. So let's say um, the teenager takes so the, the car when they're not supposed to and has an accident. The parents are going to give him a dirty look. Right? They're going to look at him and let, let him know, we're angry, we're upset, what you did was not right. All right? So again, lots of situations where we could use that. All right, so let me write that down. Uh, give someone a dirty look, which is to look angry, upset, and not approve of what was done. Ooh, my, hand, my typing got really good there. All right. Ooh, this is a nice one from Ibtahal. He says, dress and behave well. Don't let others give you a dirty look. So yes, yeah, some if you're going to go out, in public, dress well, look smart, because if you, you go out in your pajamas, people are going to give you a dirty look. 
Excellent. Very good. Oh, and we've got a question here from Luann. She, sa she says, does it make sense if I use paint the town red to talk about kids, meaning that they could leave the room upside down? So it's a good question. Paint the town red is more about having fun, going out and having fun. So yes, we could talk about kids. We could say to the kids, come on, let's go and paint the town red. Let's go have some fun. But if we're talking about them leaving their room looking bad, they're not painting the town red because uh, you're not going out to have fun. They're just probably making a mess. So I wouldn't use it in that exact situation. Um, and, and to go with it, she said she's learned that with some teachers, but not sure. I would say don't use it. You would need to explain how they painted the town red. So they, they painted the town red and made a mess. It doesn't really work. So don't, don't use it for that. All right, now let's talk a little bit about how to learn idioms. We've done a few, quite a few here. We're gonna do a few more uh, at the end. And obviously there are lots of idioms. There are lots of vocabulary. There's lots of uh, language that you guys want to learn. And I always like to have a specific way that you guys should learn idioms. Now we've got a list here, right? I do not think you must learn a list. Learning a list of idioms or anything like that is tricky. You're walking around with a list in your head. And then when you have a conversation, it's difficult to pick from the, the list what to say. And what will end up happening is you will forget the list, right? Because you never used it. You'll get another list and put that in your head and try. Instead, what you should do is do one thing at a time one thing at a time. So in your next conversation in English, choose one of the idioms that you want to use. Let's say you choose um, paint town red. You want to talk about going out and having fun, and you want to put that into a sentence. You want to use it. That's, and if you're just thinking about that one idiom in that conversation, and what you will find is by using it, by thinking about it and actually using it, it becomes part of you. So the next time, it's going to be quicker to grab it. And then the next conversation, you choose another idiom and you put that into the conversation. Maybe eventually you'll put two or you'll think about two idioms at a time to put in, but don't think about the list. Choose one thing for that day to put into your conversation and you use it. And then it's going to become part of you. And you can use that for idioms, for um, vocabulary, for any kind of new word or new language that you learn. Choose one from the list, put it into the conversation, make it part of you. The next time, another one from the list, and then another one. And then you actually use the list. You don't just learn it. All right, so let's do some more. All right, we've got some more that we can do. I mean, there are so many. We're going to see what we can get through here. So uh, next one, let me take this off the board. And my board is jumping up and down, but it's fine. It hasn't fallen over yet. All right. So the next one I want to do is... Bad blood, all right, bad blood. And I think there is even a song uh, called Bad Blood. So it, it's very used, uh, it's used a lot. Now, what does bad blood mean? It means there is a conflict. There is a problem between you and the other person. It could be something that happened in the past. Uh, it could be something that's happening now. There's bad blood. There's conflict between you. So again, going back to our example, my friend um, lied about me, told the boss all that stuff. Now there, there might be bad blood between us. The girlfriend that was cheated on by the boyfriend, they are going to have bad blood. All right, so there is a conflict. There is uh, bad feelings between people.
And again, unfortunately, we've all um, had situations like that where something has happened and now there's bad blood between us. All right. So again, you can send some stuff and tell us how we could use that. Um, then let's do another one. Let's do something different. All right. Now, this is a funny sounding one and very popular, actually. Uh, you'll hear this a lot in movies and television. And this is a game of chicken, or sometimes we will call it to play chicken. Now, that sounds a little strange, right? A game of chicken. It's not a game of thrones. It's a game of chicken or to play chicken. Now, what this means is that you and the other person, you're facing off, you're in a competition or you're in an argument and you're both very, very strong at the moment. You're both shouting really, really loud. Or what you want to see is who is going to back down first. Who will, uh, maybe they're going to give up. Maybe they're going to admit they were wrong. Whatever it is, someone now has to back down. So you're both shouting, you're both arguing, you're both like at, like that. Who is going to back down? Who's going to be the chicken? Chicken, uh, in, in English, often means someone that is cowardly, that is scared. All right? So chicken, in this situation, means to be scared. To be scared. So if you're playing chicken, you want to see who is going to be scared first. So whatever the conflict is, who is going to give in first? So there is conflict. And we're saying who will give up first. So we've all been in situations like that as well. We've all had uh, arguments with people. And we can say we're playing chicken. Are you going to give in? Am I going to give in? Are you going to say you're wrong? Am I going to say I'm wrong? We're playing chicken. Who is going to give up first? So again, very useful. Lots of different situations for that. It could be work-related. It could be relationship-related. It could be family-related. We've all played chicken with someone. And we've got this extra idiom here as well. I'll write it down as a separate one. That um, chicken, and I'm going to put it as a question because that's how we might say it. Are you chicken? This means are you afraid? Are you scared? So in English, in our uh, figurative way, chicken, chickens are afraid. I suppose we think that they're afraid because you can't catch them. They run away. They're very scared of us. So are you chicken? Are you afraid? When could we use that? We could, uh, let's say you're going to, uh, on an adventure. Let's say you're going uh, bungee jumping right, or skydiving. All right. So you are there with your friend and then you get, you get like nervous. You get scared. You're like, I don't know. And your friend could say, are you chicken? In other words, are you scared? And it's supposed to get me like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So that's uh, how to do that. And uh, are you? what do you guys think about that? Would you guys do bungee jumping or skydiving? Would you jump out of a plane? You can let me know in the chat. Um, because it, I've done that, and it's a lot of fun. So I think you guys should do it. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do another one. All right, so uh, here is, a, let's do something positive, I think. We've done a lot of negative ones. Let's do a positive one. All right, so here's something a lot of you guys might be doing very often. Hit the books. Hit the books. So this is not a physical, <laughs> I lost the top of my, uh, my marker. So this is not a physical um, hitting. This is to study. So this is a fun way to say, I am going to study. And I'm sure you guys, uh, you hit the books a lot when you're learning English, right? You got to go study. You got to go revise. You've got to hit the books. All right. Ooh, I haven't written these down in the chat. Let me write them in the chat and see what you guys have uh, come up with. So we've got bad blood, which is, oh, my typing went bad again. 
bad blood, which means there are bad feelings between people. Then we have uh, a game of chicken or to play chicken. And this means to see who will give up first. And uh, we could say, are you chicken? Which means, are you scared? And the final one we just did is to hit the books. And that means to study. Usually to study quite hard. I see a lot of stuff in the chat. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Um, ooh, Kalipan says that uh, while he's been watching our class, he got his uh, science exam result and he got 90. So well done, Kalipan. Excellent. Science can be hard. Um, uh, Malik has asked us to repeat play with fire because he did not understand. So let's talk about it again quickly. So play with fire means to do something that is dangerous, to do something that could be bad. Something bad could happen from it. So in our example, let, let's make our example simple. All right, let's say again, you're driving very fast and you're weaving in and out of the cars. That is playing with fire because you could have an accident, something bad could happen. So to play with fire is to do something dangerous, something bad could happen because of it. All right, then... Um, Then uh, Ali is asking, is it correct if I, use, if, if I say I have bad blood with my girlfriend? If something has happened between you and your girlfriend, something bad, yes. Then you could say there's bad blood, right? And we're going to do one more that's going to, after there's bad blood, what do you do? But yes, there could be bad blood between you and a girlfriend or a family member. Um, then we have here. Um, uh, Abdul says, my parents are having bad blood with me. So yes, again, uh, in a family situation, sometimes things go wrong. People are in a conflict and there can be bad blood in a family very often. Um, and we've got a good example here from, uh, Hama Uriaz. I think you're chicken because he is a good boxer. So maybe there's a fight, uh, a boxing uh, match and the guy doesn't want to go into the ring, into to fight because the other guy's a good boxer, and we'll say, "Are you chicken?" Because he's really good. Very good use. Very good use. All right. Um, and then we've got from Ibtahal, uh, study hard and hit the books. And Hello Kitty YouTube, uh, hit the books today. Excellent. All right, let's do one more because we talked about bad blood. Uh, once there is bad blood, what we would say is you need to. Clear the air. Clear the air. So what does that mean? It means you have to talk about it and, again, push everything away. Maybe let bygones be bygones. Right? So we could, we could make a whole story with uh, all the idioms we've done today. So clear the air is to talk about things and then push them aside. Make the air clear so that everything is good between us. So is to make um, things good again. And this is an emotional one. So it's not about uh, actual clearing the air. This is about making things good between you and someone else emotionally. So my friend was lying to the boss about me. I gave him the dirty look, but then we talked about it. We cleared the air. We made things good between us, and now we're going to let bygones be bygones. So, yeah, we got a whole story uh, going today. All right. Uh, let's see if there's any more. Um, ooh, one more question, and I think this is a good one. This is from Grahani. He says, I don't know how to distinguish idioms, proverbs, and riddles. All right. That is a very good question. Let me put it over here. All right, so, ooh. so the question is, what is the difference between an idiom, 
a proverb and a riddle. Okay, so an idiom, what we've been doing today, is just a fun way to say something. So we've looked at, uh, for example, hit the books. It, it's not saying anything other than study. It's a fun way to say study. Most of these are fun, interesting ways to express how we're feeling. We could say, I'm going to study today. Or we could say, I'm going to hit the books. But it sounds more fun to say that. So think of idioms as a fun way to say something. Now, a proverb wants to teach you a lesson. So that's the big difference here. So a proverb, proverb teaches a lesson. So uh, an example of a proverb, uh, one that I always think of is, um, it's be, I wanna, I'm just trying to remember how it goes. Uh, uh, better one in the hand than two in the bush, which means it's better uh, to maybe focus on what you have and not focus on what you might have. So it's telling you a story. It's teaching a lesson. So it's not just a quick, fun way to say something. There is a lesson there that you're supposed to learn. That's a proverb. And usually it's longer. Um, and it's, it's got a moral behind it sometimes. It's teaching you something. And then we have a riddle. A riddle is more of a fun question, uh, even like uh, a joke in a way. So uh, riddles, are, you don't use riddles uh, in everyday conversation. Um, it's more like telling a joke. So you'd say, listen, uh, I, I wanna, I'm going to tell you a riddle. And then you explain the riddle and you give an answer at the end. So it's a question, it's more like a joke, and it's fun, and at the end there is an answer. But you don't use it all the time in conversation. So the idiom, you use a lot in conversation. The proverb, sometimes you might use it if you want to teach a lesson. And then the riddle is if you're just having fun, you heard something interesting, listen to this riddle. All right, so that is uh, the difference. Um, oh, and we got one more example here from Ibtahal. Talk with the manager about me and clear the air. Very nice example about me and my friend. Um, and they are enemies, but their elders cleared the air between them. Excellent. Very good uh, use of all of our idioms. All right. I told you guys I was going to give you a, uh, a, a discount code. Let me put it up here for you. All right, so you guys can go and use go live as the discount code. I think you can get up to 36% um, off on subscriptions, certain subscriptions, I'm not sure. But go now and use it. Um, and again, if you guys have just joined us or you joined us late, remember everything is in the playlist, including all the other Cambly live sessions we've had. Go take a look. Take a look at the other lessons that we have. Everything's in the playlist. If you guys are unfamiliar with uh, Cambly, it is a great platform. It's online. It's on your phone where you can chat with tutors like me with whatever you need. If you want to focus on exam preparation like we talked about today, if you want to focus on grammar, on idioms, if you just want to work on your conversation skills, you'll find everyone there. Uh, so go take a look. And thank you guys again for joining us today. Uh, remember, keep joining us for all our Cambly Live sessions. Don't miss out. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.